Well, good evening. Welcome to Greater Grace Church of Chester and Ellesmere Port. Uh, hopefully you can hear us and see us tonight. Um, this is our Bible study um, and you can uh, join with us for the next half hour or so. We'll be opening God's Word um, and also uh, find us at our website ggechurch.co.uk. Um, you can find us on um, Instagram and on uh, WhatsApp as well. Uh, if you can hear us and see us, please, as we always say, leave us a like, a gif, an emoji, a reaction, a wave, a comment, and uh, just so that we know that you are able to hear us and see us. So tonight we're going to have a look at a passage of the day, uh, which is taken from um, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Um, but before that, uh, a few little reminders that there is um, Ladies Bible Study on the 17th, Wednesday the 17th, 10.30 in the morning. Getting gradually later through the month. It used to be the first week in the, uh, of the month, but due to different things like uh, the conferences and Easter holidays, it's, it's, it's gradually moving back a week. Uh, so it, this month it will be on the 17th on the 20th we are planning a celebration for Ruby Lozine who will be 100 years old and is still very lively and was out at church today um, so if you'd like to uh, wish her a happy birthday get in touch we're arranging a meal in a restaurant um, we will need a, a vague idea of the numbers of people who are coming um, we have a, a place booked so um that's uh, things that are coming up so tonight let's pray we'll give this time to the lord and we'll just trust him and see what he does with it heavenly father we thank you lord for your goodness and your faithfulness lord we thank you lord for every blessing that you've given us we thank you lord for who you are as our god and as our savior and we just pray that you would really cover us now encourage us and strengthen us Heal us and renew us, forgive us, lead us and show us your heart, Lord, today. We pray be with those that need a special touch. We pray for Jim's health, Lord, and uh, Ruby's continuing health, Lord, and any others, Lord, that need it. Um, be with those that we weren't able to uh, see today, Lord, and just really cover each one, Lord. We want to lift up uh, Danny Eaton in Baltimore as well for full he healing there for uh, Veronica Moses as well Lord uh, for healing and life there Lord also for um, <coughs> uh, Pastor Nick Skinner as well Lord we pray also for uh, Ken Chambers Damien's father Lord that you just really touch and heal her especially Lord and give uh, opportunities for great conversations about you Lord there uh, just peace of mind for the whole family Lord comfort those that have uh, lost loved ones recently as well and uh, we pray that you would touch hearts Lord now uh, uh, just open our minds and our hearts to you Lord this evening and fill us with your spirit lead us and guide us in the things of you Lord tonight and just guide now as we read your word in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so we're going to read, as I said, from 2 Timothy, chapter 2. If you have a Bible at home, uh, read it as well. Uh, and it says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in grace, in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of jesus christ no man that warreth entangleth himself against uh, with the, fa the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier and if a man also strive for mastery, he yet is not crowned, except he strive lawfully. 
the husbandman that laboureth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain salvation, which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us, if we believe not. Yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for these words that we've just read. <coughs> Guide us, Lord, we pray, and open your words to us now, Lord. We have nothing of ourselves. We have no words, no thoughts, no ideas. Uh, but we trust in your word. And we trust in your Holy Spirit. And we ask now that you would anoint with your Holy Spirit and bring your word to life to us through your name uh, for the sake of your glory anoint every utterance with the holy spirit of truth of revelation of life in the name of our lord jesus christ amen well yeah so uh, this subject that we had this morning being strong in grace it's a good idea it's good teaching to be strong in grace and uh, we um, looked at this idea of being uh, living by grace receiving grace what does it mean to be strong in grace having a, a strong identity has been bought by the Lord Jesus Christ having a strong idea that our salvation is by grace not of ourselves not of works not of any effort of humankind but just purely and simply dependent on God's mercy God's love for us God's plan for us and his overriding all-powerful uh, all-changing grace that's it isn't it the simplicity being strong in grace uh, it's no uh, bad thing it is the only way we can live it is the best way for us to live <laughs> yeah the things that uh, uh, has to have many witnesses the same commit to faithful men who are able to teach them to others also yeah this is it we we pass on the message of grace we pass on the physical uh, attribute of grace. We give mercy to people. Uh, one of the most powerful testimonies of the Christian faith is that people are able to forgive things that are done to them. Now, it's interesting, Paul talks about see, suffering as an evildoer. In other words, he has the same punishment. He's in jail. Uh, the same as many people who have committed crimes. But he is in jail for the gospel's sake. He is in jail for his, his beliefs and his con conviction that the Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Uh, the son of David uh, was raised from the dead and that was what had put him in jail. You remember that, that, that um, account of how he uh, witnessed to King Agrippa uh, that uh, in the court uh, of the Roman governor 
you know, I always get them mixed up whether it's Festus or Felix. Um, but it's like, yeah. Um, <laughs> but the point was that, yeah, they sent him to Rome. They sent him, well, he appealed to Caesar, so he gets sent to Rome, but he goes to Rome as a prisoner, uh, as a criminal. And what is his crime? Simply uh, that, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and that belief caused such a, 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 an uproar amongst the Orthodox Jews that they wanted to kill him. Could this happen to us today? Uh, could our belief uh, system, our belief in the Bible, our belief in the Lord Jesus Christ, could that cause people to hate us? Could it cause, cause people to try and stop us, what we're saying? Yes, it could, and it does. And we see cases of this today in the media, where people's beliefs are in um, contrast with the culture of the day. The Roman Empire had its own value system. And people who went against the value system of the Roman Empire were the people who were judged and fell foul of it. Now, we see that today, that maybe our value system as Christians bling, bling, brings us into conflict with the culture of the day, the government of the day. And that's as it should be, to be honest. That is the way that things have always been. People who stand for truth, stand for the Bible, believe the Lord Jesus Christ as their saviour, are part of another kingdom. And as such, they will always have that uh, conflict there. And we're told, aren't we, in this passage, to endure suffering like a good soldier. Because someone has chosen us to be a soldier. That's the thing that it says there, isn't it? That actually... Therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangling himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Now, the era that Paul is writing in is a strongly militarized era. The Roman Empire the Roman legions were sent all over the empire and uh, the soldiers had a certain amount of power and respect and what would happen is that people would be selected to be soldiers it wasn't a conscript army uh, but they might be selected from all over the empire so you might have people from Germanic tribes or Gauls or people from Greece Sparta or people from Armenia or Northern Africa and the Roman Empire would go and choose the best people to be the leaders and the centurions and put them in the Roman army um, the British did something similar in their empire in that they would take people from different parts of the empire and put them in the British army together so you might have Indians and Scotsmen and uh, uh, Zulus and, and people like that, you know, serving in the British Army together, or people from the Caribbean. And it's like, yeah, well, you know, it doesn't matter. Australian troops, uh, they're all the British Army, Canadians. Um, and it was a way of, of the, the army becoming more important than someone's nationality. That becomes their identity. The Romans did the same thing in that, you know, they're, they're the, the, the Roman army, the Roman soldier, uh, they depended on the soldiers around them uh, on their, uh, for their survival. Their shield would lock into their neighbour's shield and that was the thing, they were a fighting unit. And uh, he, Paul here, he uses that as, a, as a, an image for this, uh, in that for the believer that actually we don't get distracted by what's going on around us. Why? Because we want to please someone who has chosen us to be a, a soldier. Now you might say, well, I'm not capable for warfare and I'm not, I'm not hyper-spiritual. I don't even know what I'm doing as a believer or a Christian. I'm very weak. I'm very uh, lacking in knowledge. But the point is, 
God has chosen you to be part of his kingdom and God has chosen you to be part of of his army for spiritual warfare so as long as you can utter a small prayer you are engaged in in um, warfare we were talking about that in the rap this afternoon after church um, how actually you know Daniel's prayers were thwarted by the demonic uh, challenge of the prince of the power of Persia but the point is God had heard his prayer you know from the very outset now there was uh, there was a combat in prayer and that's something that is important for us to know that actually we are in a spiritual warfare and God has chosen us if we are on his kingdom if we are if we belong to him if Christ is our Savior God has chosen us to be part of the battle now God only chooses the best soldiers the best warriors that he thinks like any general would he doesn't put us into situations where he, he, he expects us to fail or thinks that we won't do well God has chosen us to thrive in his kingdom and so uh, if you are called into God's kingdom it's because God has a purpose for you now in the the an army there are many different roles and positions and you know infantry and cavalry artillery as we were singing in that old song this morning about being in the Lord's army but the point is that each one is is important each one uh, is vital to the uh, to the survival um, of that army as a whole so uh, in the same way you know that they uh, we talked a while back about the armor there the armor bearers for Jonathan and Saul and people like that they were they were vital in the kingdom uh, in the battle of the ancient world in the in the days when Israel was going into battle and each one had a role and for us as believers we all have a role in this in God's kingdom in the family of God in the in the body of Christ yeah so uh, one thing I wanted to pick up on as well is that um, at the end there we have that thing where it says you know if we believe not he abides faithful he cannot deny himself and at the end of this morning's message we also were looking at the story of Thomas and uh, we read that verse, those verses in John chapter 20 uh, and it says but Thomas one of the twelve uh, called Didymus was not with them when Jesus came and the other disciples therefore said unto him we have seen the Lord but he said unto them except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side I will not believe and after eight days again his disciples were with him <coughs> and Thomas was with them then came Jesus the door being shut and stood in the midst and said peace be unto you then saith he to Thomas reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and he and reach hither thy hand and thrust into my side be not faithless but believing and Thomas answered and said unto him my Lord and my God and Jesus saith unto him Thomas thou hast seen me and thou hast believed blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed and I love that thought that Jesus says to him be not faithless but believing and yeah at the end of this uh, passage in second uh, Timothy Paul is more or less saying the same thing to Timothy be not faithless but believing whatever the the struggles are the uh, the difficulties uh, the the battle that we face keep going forward be not faithless but believing actually you know 
again we were talking about prayer here after church today and there is that element you know where, that if we believe that we will receive what we get what we are asking in prayer the lord is more likely to to give us that thing you know if we if we pray in faith uh, we pray in expectation then you know god often comes through in these things not always as we said sometimes you know god's will is so different from our will that we don't understand what he's doing and and it takes us a while to catch up but maybe later we will understand what god was doing and why he allowed us to go through things and why he didn't answer the prayers in the way that we thought at the time but yeah god does hear our prayers he does and yes there is a spiritual battle on we are, we are called as being the best people we are chosen for that struggle that conflict thomas had that um, that stubbornness there to say well i'm not going to believe it i want to see the proof i want to see the evidence uh, i need to have uh, something that i can really uh, concrete proof before i make any any decisions on these things and, and, and Jesus said, don't be faithless, but believe. I, I can give you the proof if that's what you want. But actually, so many people today, we can have the proof and still not believe. That is the point, isn't it? That it's a decision of the heart for people to actually believe and uh, it's uh, not down to physical proof it's not down to having the evidence it's not down to having the the right arguments in the right place it's actually down to the the openness of someone's heart and where they are at with god and whether they allow the spirit of the living god to influence their thinking uh, we can provide the same evidence to two different people and one will receive it and become a Christian and praise God for that salvation that they've been offered someone else will see exactly the same facts the same uh, details the same scriptures and they will sort of say well I don't believe it it's a lot of rubbish no I'm not going to, I'm not going to be open and it comes down to the response of the heart um, somebody uh, mentioned this morning was challenging me online to prove that Jesus was God somebody from another faith and I was thinking the point is no it's not that the evidence is not there it's not that Jesus didn't claim that it's not that the scripture doesn't support that it's not that we can't provide the the arguments for it but the real issue there is if someone's heart is not open then what is the point if someone is asking you to provide scripture and provide evidence and provide proof for Jesus's lordship and Jesus existing and Jesus being on the earth and Jesus being the son of God you can provide all of that but they will still say no they will still deny it they will still find an excuse because that is the human heart's nature but at the same time someone else who who god spirit is touching who's kind of uh, god their heart has been opened like lydia it talks about that if you remember in that 17 about how uh, Lydia was a woman who, who, who the Spirit of God had opened her heart before uh, Paul and Silas even went to the city of Philippi and she was open and she was ready to receive the gospel uh, David Little was sharing on uh, Wednesday about you know the open door the effectual door uh, doors of promise and door, uh, doors of, uh, of of opportunity and it, yeah you know what um, it's it's true that there sometimes there is an open door for us to speak to someone 
but the thing is you know sometimes people have the door there but it is closed and they are not prepared to let it be opened so the thing is however hard we bang on that door it won't make any difference but other people who are ready to receive they may not even need the proof they may not even need to see things like Jesus said to Thomas blessed are they that have not seen and yet they've still believed they didn't need to see me standing here with the nail prints in my hands and with the, the, the spear wound in my side but, you, but I did this for you Thomas because you asked to see it and I will be prepared to let you see it if that helps you because Thomas I love you Thomas I am here for you I am your saviour and Thomas said yes my lord my god he calls him God there's another good reason where actually Thomas calls him God and Jesus doesn't say well I steady up there I'm not God oh no 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 he actually receives it and actually calls him blessed <laughs> there you go Jesus agrees with it and says yes blessed are you blessed are you uh, because you've seen and you've believed but blessed are those that have not seen it and yet they still believe well we'll leave it there for tonight I think but uh, plenty to think about plenty for us to be going on with but the most important thing is be not faithless but believing keep trusting keep open keep uh, your heart ready to be a good soldier to follow the calling of our life uh, and whatever God has for us to do we are ready and we are open to do it let's pray Heavenly Father we just thank you tonight Lord for your goodness and your faithfulness Lord and thank you Lord that for those of us who have trusted you as our, as our saviour you have a calling for us you have a purpose for us and we are called we are chosen to be on your side fighting your cause fighting with you that you are fighting through us on our behalf and that we are fighting on your behalf <laughs> thank you lord that you've made us part of this this uh, this battle but also that you are the one who has won the victory and lord we just pray also if there's anyone out there tonight who has never trusted you as their savior and maybe they're a little bit afraid of the warfare and maybe they're a little bit afraid of the opposition they may get but lord it is the best decision to trust you there is no other hope we can't survive on our own we can't stand in our own strength and our own merit but we can be strong in your grace and Lord we just pray that if anyone is unsure about these things that they would say Lord come into my heart give me that assurance show me that you can save me I trust you and I believe you as Thomas did eventually I believe you and maybe it's taken a long time for me to come to that point where I trust you but I'm there and I want you to be my saviour and I want you to fight my battles for me and I trust you and I love you be my saviour now Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen and if you said that prayer for the first time please either get in touch or let someone know who is a believer and uh, make sure that you uh, remember this day as well take care and God bless and bye for now and see you again very soon bye bye